One of you guys said I needed to uh, get me Whataburger breakfast. Well, Whataburger is the only thing close to my house with a drive-through. So we pretty much eat here all the time. So what we do in the south is we go looking for crappie in the creeks when it gets cold. When the water temp drops in that 50, 55 degree range, we like to look for crappie up shallow in creeks. And it works pretty good. We use a jig and bobber setup and that's how we catch them. So what I'm going to do today is go in a little more in depth of what we're using, how we're doing it, and what we actually look for to find these crappie. So stick with me. Let's get down to these creeks and see what we can find. I'm going to try a couple places I've never been. Dropped off in Walmart. Again. <laughs> I need to get some new bobbers. You run through those pretty fast during the creek season because you break off a lot. If you're lucky, you can retrieve them. If you're not lucky, you or another feller will go back in there with a kayak and get it later and end up with a whole bunch of extras from other people. Get a lot of tackle that way using the kayak. But let's see what they've got for floats. So you got a bunch of junk bobbers, them old you know, bluegill bobbers. That's not what you're looking for. You know, me, me personally, I like the weighted bobbers because I can cast further. If they've got the little weight on them, it gives me a lot more distance on my cast. So I think I'm gonna take a couple packages of the weighted bobbers. And then here again is some more weighted bobbers. So they're tiny floats with a weight on the bottom here. So I can get some distance out of my cast without making a big impression on the water. So I'm gonna get a couple packages of that size and then I'm gonna move up to this size. Now, you gotta read on the package on some of these where it says weighted. Because if you look at these, well, those are, that's a wrinkled package. If you look at these, you can actually see the weight. But on this one, you can't see it on the bottom. You have to turn it up and the weight is kind of embedded. There you go, see it there? It's embedded in the float. So when you just grab the package, you can't really see it. You have to read it. So weighted bobbers and then peg floats. These kind here, those are also really good. I'm gonna get a package of those. Uh, I just don't like the long ones. I'd rather have a teardrop or a short squatty bobber. Um, this is the teardrop style here. I'd rather go with this or a little small round one over a long one. I, I don't like this for casting. Um, it catches wind. So when you cast it out there, you're going to catch air. Um, with that one, it's going to slow down your cast and, and limit your cast distance. Now these little peg floats right here, they're really small. If you notice, I mean how small they are compared to my finger. That's my pinky. And you know, they're tiny, tiny little floats. So I'm gonna get a couple of those. That'll give me some variety. So a couple things that you definitely need if you come down creek fishing in the spring or in the fall, in my opinion, is a tackle bag. Some kind of tackle bag pack, something to get your all your gear organized. Another thing is a five gallon bucket. Never leave the house without a five gallon bucket. And the last thing is a pair of mud boots. You can get those at Walmart for seven bucks. I think these were 12 or 14. They have a little bit more tread on bottom, but you need a good set of boots. If you can afford it, or order you some, you know, Sims or Tidewee or something offline, Gator, Gator Waders. That's what you need. A bucket, a backpack, a pair of wading boots, and you also need, obviously, your rod and reel. So today, I'm gonna start off right now with a pink head, chartreuse and moon dust monkey milk whatever you want to call that color and i'm going up about two foot to a weighted bobber that bobber is about the diameter of a quarter so just to give you an idea let's get down here before anybody finds us is where the slip cork comes in best. There we go, there we go. That's probably the best it's gonna get right there. Dadgummit. Thought I had, thought I was clear of that. Oh 
go with a little something darker. This this pink's going to be a little more visible in this water than that chartreuse and and uh, clear. This pink's going to just be a little darker color. So give me just a tad bit more visibility, I think. Perfect. That's exactly where I wanted to be. Exactly. It's the only eddy over there. There's a little bit of timber. Oh. That tree's... Oh, I'm off. That tree's hanging down in the water. So, it's a little harder to... I suggest you guys shooting into this dense of cover because if you try to cast, you're going to get hung up. Last chance. We'll walk up a little further and we're done. Last, last chance, last dance. All right, guys. This trail's kind of just about disappeared. All right, what do we got over here? All right, we got this little feeder across the way. It's got current in front of it, though. I'm not sure that's a good idea. All we can do is shoot it and try. I don't think that's going to be good, but we can try. I think that's going to cut it. Well, at least I got right on the ledge. Right on the ledge of it. I'm asking for trouble, but how you gonna catch fish? I should get in here and ask for trouble. That's too fast, for sure too fast. So we can't hit that bank. Boom! I got it. That's it. That's gonna be my best option. It's still too fast. All right, I found me another little eddy right here. I really want to try. Uh, oh, got one. Got a fish, guys. Oh, nice crappie. Nice crappie, guys. Nice crappie. All right. That's a keeper. That's a keeper fish right there. That's a keeper fish. That's what I was looking for. Oh, man. That's what I was looking for. That fish was in six inches of water, guys. If you can see where I'm doing, I'm fishing shallow enough that I can't even use my bobber. Oh, got one. Got another one, guys. Got another one. Oh, yeah. That one's little. We'll let them go. We'll let them both go. Got another one. There we go. Let's let that one go. Let's go ahead and let this other one go. Come on. Quit doing that. All right. So right where I wanted to catch them, I'm catching them. Mm. But if they're going to stay some... All right. There you go, guys. All right, tossed him back. So the pink's doing good for us right now. And uh, honestly, I need to uh, unclip this bobber or lower it considerably. 
I mean, we're talking six inches. That's that's how deep we're fishing right there, guys. That's like six inches. We know they're here. Oh, got one. Another one. Another. Fi oh, nice. Another keeper. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Another keeper right there, guys. Oof. He just gobbled it down. He gobbled her down. Gobbled her down. I got this guy in the gills. A little bit. But I think if I can get that hook out without tearing his gill up, he'll be all right. He's bleeding quite a bit because I'm squeezing on him. Let's see. I got it. He's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. All right. Pink. Oh, Pink got her done, guys. Pink's getting her done. Six inches deep. All right. We'll walk out of here now. These little spots are all over the place. Just look on Google Maps and find you one.